I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Joshua chapter 6. You can just open it there and you can kind of follow along. I'm not going to take time to read the whole story, but this story is found in the first few verses, and I'm going to preach out of the book of Joshua this morning. But I'm preaching today about the walls will fall as we fast and pray. Get ready. We've got seven more days of this fast and prayer season. And I want you to get your faith up this morning, get your joy up this morning to get ready for the walls to fall. The enemy builds walls. It starts with one brick and he adds another brick and another brick. The bricks have names, the brick of doubt, the brick of fear, the brick of negative thinking, generational curses, hate, unforgiveness, oppression, depression, addictions. And he says there's no way out. There's no way to be free. Enslaving sin is one of those bricks. But boy, when you get serious with God and you focus your faith on seven days of fasting and prayer and jump in on this fast and join us, I believe that the walls will fall. Joshua chapter 6, it runs parallel. This story runs parallel with fasting and prayer for the last seven days of this fast. I want to give you some quick lessons from Joshua's story and the Israelite story and what God is saying to us for the next seven days. Number one, God gave Joshua a simple instruction. He said, get out there and march around the walls of Jericho one time for six days, and on the seventh day, march seven times. And Joshua could have said, this is crazy. This is stupid. I'll just go get a battering ram, and I can knock the door down? Why am I, why, why in the world would I do that? That makes no sense. That fasting and prayer stuff, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in miracles. And that is your problem. We try to fix our problems our way. We think that what we think and what we do is all that matters. We take things in our own hands, but instead of following God's simple formula, God's simple prescription for a miracle, He gives a plan. He gives an instruction. And one of God's instructions, if you want to see the walls fall, is fast and pray for seven days. Keep going. Keep fasting. Keep believing. And then the second thing, after he gave him a simple, and some of you say that's too simple. That won't work. If we'll do what the Bible says, God will back it up. The second thing that God said in Joshua chapter 5, he came near, the Bible said, Jericho, and he saw a man with a sword in his hand, and he fell at his feet, and he began to worship. And suddenly when he looked up, even though before he was seeing the massive walls, they would be higher than the ceiling of this building, history records. And they were much, probably twice that length. And instead of seeing those walls, he saw someone who said, I am the captain of the Lord of the armies of angels that are in heaven. I am the commander. I am the one who commands the armies of heaven. And instead of seeing that wall, listen carefully, in that moment, he got his focus off of the walls and he got his focus on that angel that we know was really Jesus. And theologians will tell you that. He looked up and he saw Jesus. You got to get your eyes off the wall for the next seven days and get down and begin to worship God and march and obey the simple instructions of getting your eyes off that problem that is so big, those walls that are so high and so thick, and get them on Jesus. Fix your eyes on the commander of the armies of heaven. I will look unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help 
is the Lord, and the Lord is bigger than that wall. And suddenly the wall goes out of focus, and he begins to focus on Jesus. When you fast and pray, the focus comes off the problem, and it comes on the one who said, I'm the Lord, and I will lead you, and I will guide you, and I will honor you, and I will raise you, and I will cause your heart to be healed. I will make a way for you. I will bless you. You focus on that one, not on the wall. Fasting makes you do that. Prayer makes you do that. And then in Joshua 5 and 15, he said, take your shoes off, Joshua. You're on holy ground. Now listen to me carefully. When he said, take your shoes off, what does that mean? That represents the past. Take the past off. Why do you say it represents the past? Let me prove it. Deuteronomy 29 and verse 5 God said, for 40 years, I led you in the wilderness and your clothes did not wear out. Watch this. Nor did your sandals wear out on your feet. But they had traffic through the wilderness, the dust of everywhere they had been. For 40 years, they were wearing the same shoes. And God said, I'm not taking you into the same place you've been walking in. You're crossing over into the promised land. And I need you to take your shoes off. Let go of the past. The Lord's about to take you into your promised land. And you can't bring the old. You've got to get rid of the old. Take off your shoes. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Ephesians 6 and verse 15 tells us that shoes mean something else. It said, have your feet shod with the preparation or the readiness of the gospel. Shoes represent readiness. And here's what I'm trying to get you to see. So many times we're so ready to go out and get the job done. We're so ready to just, you know, get our shoes on and go, go make it happen in ourselves. But when you fast and when you pray, God's saying, take your shoes off and be still and know that I am God. Take your shoes off. I don't want you to run out into the battle. I don't want you to handle this your way. I want you to spend some time with me. The next, all I need, Joshua, for victory the next seven days is for you to get your, listen to my simple instruction, believe it and do it, and then get the focus off the wall and get it on me and listen, take your shoes off, be still and know that I am God. And then he said something powerful to Joshua earlier in that book. In Joshua chapter 1, he said, Three times be strong and courageous, for I am with you. Be strong and courageous. And then he said, Meditate on the word day and night. And then, these are biblical words, you will be prosperous and successful. I do not apologize for those two words. It's not, a, it's not by chance if you meditate in the Word day and night. You will be prosperous. You will be successful if you keep this Word and you live it. God will raise you up from the ashes. God will supply all your needs according to His riches and glory. God invented meditation. Don't let the counterfeit religions act like they're deep in meditation. Before they ever heard of meditation, God said, meditate on this. Wake up with the Word. Go to bed with the Word. Play the Word in your car. Listen to it in music. Listen to it on tape. Listen to it on whatever you got, iPods or Internet or whatever. Get the Word to flowing in you. Meditate on the Word of God. And God says, if you do it, you will be strong. If you do it, you will be courageous. If you'll do it, you will be prosperous. If you do it, you will be successful. When I don't believe in that stuff. Well, you get real spiritual when you're in a financial crisis. Never make fun or belittle people who believe God to supply all their needs. I started with nothing but this book and I meditated in it and everything God has done for his glory I want to say you can prosper and be successful no matter where you start. Somebody give him a shout and I'll stop. Single mother, you can prosper and be successful. Former drug addict, former jailbird in the prison, doesn't look like you'll ever be a provider. You meditate in that book right there. Open it up while you're behind bars and watch God begin to open doors. No man can stop. You can say, I will be bold. You're pitiful. I said, say, I will be bold. I will be courageous. I will prosper and I will be successful 
to the glory of God. Take a praise break and really praise him. Glory. Glory. This is not a theory and hope so for me. I know he loves to bless his people. Press down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. Hallelujah. You don't have to live in fear. You don't have to live like a little worm. You don't have to go around, oh, God, if I could just get by. Where in the Bible does it say he's a get-by God? Where in the Bible does it say just don't believe for anything, just develop a theology? Oh, no, no, I just don't like that. Uh, God wants me prosperous and successful. Okay, we'll go with your doctrine for a second. We'll give you 30 seconds. God wants you broke, tore up from the floor up, unsuccessful. He gets a lot of glory out of your unsuccess and deep poverty. I don't believe that. The gospel elevates everything it touches. <laughs> Hallelujah. Follow God's simple instruction. Fix your eyes on the commander of the armies of heaven. Take off your shoes. Be still and know that I'm God. Worship me. Spend some time with me. Meditate in my word day and night. You'll be strong, courageous, prosperous, and successful. But here's a big one. He said, Joshua, send two spies to Jericho ahead of the march. And there's going to be a prostitute by the name of Rahab. And because she's going to help you, and hide your spies when the king finds out they're there and try to kill them. I want you, I want you to save her and her whole house. When they came to the city, her family was broken. Her family was known as she was a prostitute that was known. But when the story ends, the only house that's standing is Rahab's house on a portion of the wall and she had all her family in it under a red scarlet cord that was blowing in the wind. That red cord represented the bloodline of her family. Now listen to me carefully. Because Rahab appears in the bloodline of Jesus Christ. I couldn't believe this, but I preached a sermon many years ago and I have the, they do transcripts of my sermons, and a lot of times I'll ask for them, and they can get them in a minute on a computer, and I can read and remember things that I might have forgotten. And um, I had preached on this subject before, and I called the sermon. I can't. I was I was young and dumb. I was not wise and old like I am now. But but I preached on Rahab the prostitute, and you know what I titled the sermon? The Happy Hooker. <laughs> I, can't, I cannot believe that. But that was the name of my sermon. I about swallowed my tongue. But it's a good title. Because she became the mother of a child named Boaz. She met her husband and became the mother of Boaz. And Boaz married Ruth. And Ruth and Boaz had a baby named Obed. And Obed had a son named Jesse, and Jesse had a son named David, and Jesus was the descendant of David's bloodline. What I'm trying to say to you is Joshua had no idea that his actions for the next seven days would affect entire generations and the entire world and put him in Matthew chapter 1 in the bloodline of Jesus Christ. God is not holding your past against you. He didn't hold the past against Rahab. He said, okay, if you're going to fly the red cord and be part of my bloodline, I'm going to cancel generational curses off of you and your children and your children's generation, and I'm going to put blessings on future generations all the way down to Jesus coming out of her bloodline. Oh, 
soul. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but every dad, every mom, every wannabe dad or mom ought to shout, future generations are being affected by this. Here's another one. I'm almost done. The next thing God told him, he said, now listen, while they're marching for the first six days, tell them to be quiet and not speak a word. Keep silent. The next seven days, keep silent. Quit complaining. Quit talking about the wall. Quit talking about the wall. Quit talking about this and that. Quit being negative. Quit speaking defeat. Quit speaking that old thing I'm married to. Quit speaking that. Just obey the simple instructions. Shut up. Zip your lip. Maybe you need to shut down social media. Wouldn't that be something? Just shut up. Get, off, get offline. Just shut up and say, I'm giving God the next seven days. Stop blaming others. Stop complaining. Hold your tongue. I give you permission right now that if anybody starts speaking negative things around you and your family and they're sitting near you, now if they're not a believer, you better not try it. But if they're in here and they're hearing this sermon, I give you permission to interrupt them mid-service and say, Pastor Franklin said, zip it, zip it, zip it, zip it. That's not life you're speaking. That's not victory you're speaking. Ask God, ask God the Holy Spirit to make you so sensitive that he could interrupt you mid-sentence. Should you be speaking anything about a person that, that you're believing for on the other side of that wall? And it may blow up this week, but you stand right there and have the confession of your mouth. Fix your eyes on Jesus and have the confession of your mouth. The Bible says, <laughs> Proverbs 29, verse 11, a fool gives full vent to his spirit. They just let it flow. But a wise man quietly holds back and keeps quiet. Psalms 141 in verse 3, set a guard over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. God told Joshua, order your army to speak not a word. All I want the enemy to hear from you is the sound of marching. Seven days, seven priests, seven trumpets, seven, seventh day, after seven times of marching on that day, seven rounds, then blow the trumpet, the blowing of the trumpet is the wind going through that instrument, and you're God's instrument, and the wind of the Holy Spirit is ready to refill us all, and God's plan will bring the victory, and the walls will fall. Mark 10 and verse 9, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Hebrews 13 and verse 4, let marriage be held in honor among all men. Ephesians 5, 33, husbands love your wives as you love yourselves, and wives, see that you respect your husbands. God says, I can restore that ring on your hand as you march. I can help you. I can deliver you. Fast and pray. And here's what I want to say in closing. Choose the joy of the Lord. Let there be joy and gladness. God's going to give you beauty for ashes, so act like it. Receive the breath of fresh air from the Holy Spirit this week. Fasting takes your prayer level, to a, to a, your prayers to a, to a whole nother level. Fasting moves mountains. Fasting tears down walls. This is your shot. This is your chance. And when the trumpet blows on the seventh day, God told God's people to shout, for the Lord has given you the city. He's given you the family. He's given you what's on the other side of the pain, and the walls must fall. If you're hurting today, and you're watching right now, and you want to give your life to Jesus, I want to lead you in that prayer. Start the year off strong. 
Start the year off right. Give Him your life. Just pray this prayer. Say, Jesus Christ, I receive you into my heart. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your love. I receive your goodness. I receive your help. I praise you that you love me and I surrender to you in this new year. I give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Something happens when you call the number on the screen or you go to the website and you click on the Salvation tab and you say, I prayed that prayer with Pastor Franklin and today I believe Jesus is Lord of my life. We're going to send you a free devotional. We want to send it to you free of charge in your new walk with the Lord. And as we begin a new year, what a time to get closer to God through fasting and prayer. I never get tired of saying it, and I want to invite you to join me and our entire congregation and global audience for our annual 21-day fast. If you don't understand how to fast, I'll be your fasting coach. I have so much material, plenty of fasting resources. This is the 20th anniversary of the year that I wrote the first book on fasting that uh, became a New York Times bestseller because people were awakened to the message of fasting. I want to encourage you to put God first and seek Him with all of your heart in 2024. Go online and get your resources today. And before we leave, I want to thank every one of you from the bottom of my heart for sowing seed into helping us bless the nation of Israel in our latest initiative. The Eshkol region is one that we have sown millions of dollars into because it's right on the Gaza border. And there we're going to build a new healing place called the Resilience Center. Can you imagine the bombs going off all the time? It never stops. Can you imagine the mental torment? But Jesus said, comfort, comfort my people. Why don't you pray and see what God would have you do today? Do your very best. Let's do this and let's be a blessing to the nation of Israel and to the people of Israel and pray for that whole region of Gaza. Pray for the Palestinians. There are many women and children in harm's way and they need to know that they are loved and cared about. And so let's stand in prayer. Let's stand in support. And my announcer is going to tell you how you can be a part of the blessing in the Holy Land for the nation of Israel. Over the past five years, friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries have worked to help build an amazing Kingdom Play School, four fortified bomb shelters, and a fire station for the Eshkol region in southern Israel near Gaza. Thankfully, we can report that these shelters and projects played a vital role in protecting Israeli families from this terror attack. Together, we have stood shoulder to shoulder with the brave people of these communities for years. That's why we're partnering with the Jewish National Fund to help build the Jensen Franklin Media Ministries Eshkol Resilience Center. Here, Jewish men, women, and children who suffer from PTSD, anxiety disorders, and other emotional trauma will find state-of-the-art facilities and treatments in light of the devastating circumstances here in Ashkol on October 7th, the need for psychological support is critical more than ever. Thank you, Pastor Jensen, and all your partners. We know that you have our back yesterday, today, and in the days to come. Thank you. Let's stand united with Israel, build resilience, and bring comfort to those who need it most. Go online today to see how you can get involved. This program has been sponsored in part by friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. Your prayers and financial support make these programs possible. For more information about this message and other ministry resources, visit us online at jensenfranklin.tv.